Hi everybody, today I have something pretty special for you. Many of you are viewers of Angie Hot and Flashy, who has a YouTube channel called Hot and Flashy. She's so wonderful and she does a lot more than I do. You know, I'm just menopause and I'm just the educator, but she does a little menopause, hair, beauty, all the stuff that I can't teach you. And she has asked to do a collaborative video with me and so we have come together and done a collaborative video. She's asking me all kinds of questions that her viewers want to know about. And so we're just having a chat about my services and all that she's learned from me and how the consultation that I did with her helped her so much. And we thought it would be really great if you could peer into that conversation. So let's find Angie on Skype. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Taylor. It's so great to see you again. You We've too. actually done a private consultation. Dr. Taylor offered me a consultation and I said, oh my God, yes, I could really use that. <laughs> so we have spoken one time like this on Skype where she answered all my menopause questions and then I got this giant printout. Oh my God, it's so useful. But anyway, well, the first question that I wanted to ask was just a real basic one about defining what menopause <laughs> is. And I feel like, I know, as a postmenopausal woman, <laughs> I should not be wondering, like, what is menopause? But I got to say, going into it, mm -hmm. I had no idea. All I knew was that it was kind of the end of my baby-making years, right? Yes. And that I would probably have hot flashes. Yeah. And, and I actually made my jokey channel name about it, Hot and Flashy, <laughs> because this is literally all I knew about menopause. So can you just explain, like, what exactly is menopause? How does oh. it affect? your hormones and how long does it take to happen and well you know i i call it puberty in reverse so when you go through puberty it's like the on switch to your reproductive life and what happens all these hormones start flooding into your body and you start having all this chaos in your life right you know your body changes in all these physical ways that confuse you and you get emotionally off and you feel like no one understands you and you might be a little depressed and it's a few years of a really rocky road well guess what it happens again when you're about 50. It's like you're a geriatric teenager again because that's the off switch. And when the off switch happens, it's puberty in reverse because all those hormones decrease and disappear. And it's the same kind of thing where you have a couple of years of chaos and a lot of symptoms that you don't like and your body starts changing and everyone misunderstands you and you feel like things are not okay. The, the, the key, though, is that there's more to it than that because afterwards you're at risk for all these diseases. So the symptoms are one thing, but the diseases are another. So it's really the off switch to your reproductive life. That's really what's happening. Well, that's good to know because, I mean, you already just expanded my mind about actually what menopause is. And I can't believe that I'm postmenopausal and I didn't even know about just which hormones end first, second, third. But you're normal, Angie, you're normal. This is typical. This is, this is why I have my channel, because women deserve to know this. They deserve to know this. You know, when your mother sits you down at age 11, 10, or whatever, and says, honey, you're gonna have some changes in a few years, or within the, a year, you're gonna start your period, you're gonna become a woman, and it's gonna be really rocky for two years. She should then say, and when you're 50, it's gonna happen all over again, and it's gonna be the end of your reproductive life, and then she should say, but you'll live happily ever after. <laughs> because really, it can be wonderful afterward. <laughs> of course, women in my mom's generation, they didn't really talk about that stuff. Right. So, um, I think it's becoming important for our generation to yes. really bring this out into the light and talk about it publicly. And so okay. that's why I'm so happy about your YouTube channel and yeah. about being able to use my YouTube channel to expose you to more people who clearly had so, so many questions. So I ask questions on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and it box, but I asked people to like thumbs up the ones that they were most interested in. So the sure. one that got the most interest was of course about the symptoms and mainly it was the lack of sleep, being tired all the time, hot flashes, and people wanted to know like when will it end or will it ever end? Um, so I think there's a lot of confusion about what menopause, whether it has an end, what happens if you take um, HRT, say, does that just delay having symptoms? Can you ever not have them? Well, first of all, no two women are alike. So 
women are not going to be the same with regard to when they experience any of these symptoms or how they experience these symptoms. So you have women who say, oh, I just feel fine. I've never had a symptom at all. That's okay, but it doesn't mean nothing is happening. And there are other women who are just completely miserable and can't get through their lives, and you realize it's a vicious cycle. Think about it. If you have insomnia, you can't fall asleep. But when you do fall asleep, you have night sweats. The night sweats wake you up so you don't get any sleep. You wake up and you're fatigued. When you're fatigued, you're forgetful. When you're forgetful, you're moody. The moodiness makes you feel depressed. The depression makes it so you can't sleep. It's a vicious cycle. I hear it's anywhere from like four years to 10 years, maybe even 20 years, possibly. Well, the transition, the perimenopause is two to 10 years. And most people talk about menopause when they mean perimenopause. They mean the transition like puberty, the two or three years of puberty. They mean the transition. I talk more about post-menopause. What happens after all that? Because that's the part that's more important. That's the rest of your life. Okay, so I got, (laughs) so you're in transition from anywhere from two to 10 years. So it can take 10 years that you're gonna be having hot flashes, night sweats, sleep, brain fog, miserable, and all the other symptoms that there are. Um, So let me move on to the next question because this one was like really big. (laughs) It was about belly fat and weight gain. Oh, yeah. Um, And so the basic question is, why does, I'm just going to read it here, why does menopause make it so difficult to lose weight, especially around the belly and hips? It seems to be an area that won't budge, even if I'm eating healthy. Well, my husband is eating the same. (laughs) Wait. Also, yes to all the thinning hair questions. So I guess there's also a thinning hair. It's like budging, getting the pudge to budge. No, um, I, with, with, with menopause, you have a change in your metabolism. So it slows way down and you start packing on fat in places that you never did before. But you did the same thing at puberty. Think about it. You were a string bean and you grew hips and boobs. You, your body fat distribution changed then too. Well, it does it again at menopause, but we don't like it this time because most women gain weight around their belly area. Now, the problem with that is that's what puts you at risk for heart attack. And I always, I always make the observation of face fat or belly fat because what really happens is you gain weight in your belly, but you start getting drawn in your face because the fat in your face starts disappearing and you get lines and wrinkles. But it's like you have to make a choice because if you, make your, if you, make, if you gain enough weight to make your face look great, your belly's huge. But if you lose enough weight to make your belly look great, your face looks... It's... I'm telling you, it's a dichotomy that most women deal with. And it's sort of Mother Nature's way of survival to gain the weight in the belly area. But it happens to every single menopausal woman. Even if they're not fat, they will tell you their middle, their belly is not like it used to be. Their little tiny waist is not what it used to be. It's it's universal. So someone wrote in and said, what can I do about this weight gain? Yeah. besides going on a starvation diet or, you know, doing some crazy fad diet. Yeah. Is, is the only answer take estrogen? <laughs> there's, there's, no magic, there's no magic answer. There's many ways to go about it, but the biggest thing is to adjust your expectation because you aren't going to lose it quickly like you used to. And, and, and I, I don't advocate dieting. I, I'm, I just think that that is, anything that is temporary is going to end up, failing because you're going to go back to your old habits. So if you lose weight on a temporary basis, it's probably not going to serve you very very well. So my attitude is try to adopt a different lifestyle, diet, lifestyle, whatever you will, that you can maintain permanently. It's a great time in your life to wake up and go, I'm going to start taking care of myself and really, really do it because you've spent the last 30 years taking care of everybody else. And now it's your turn. And this is one of the ways your body gets your attention by by letting you know that you can't get away with what you used to get away with. And part of the problem with weight gain is the lack of sleep because when you don't get sleep, your body goes into stress mode and packs on more weight because your body thinks it's starving or something. It thinks it's in danger because you're not sleeping well. So again, that vicious cycle comes into play. They're all connected. sugar cravings being connected to yes and alcohol cravings women crave alcohol like crazy at menopause but they don't talk about it it's a huge craving at menopause yeah it's so interesting because i noticed that when i first started becoming perimenopausal i would only have um, night sweats Uh 
and I would only have them if I drank red wine. (laughs) I was like, all right, well, I just won't drink red wine anymore. So I switched to white. Uh But I was like, darn it, menopause, why do you have to take away all the good things in life? Like it didn't I know. It's it's, yes red wine anymore so I can only drink red wine before 6 p.m otherwise I'm up with the hot flashes all night but you know my what I tell women is look you get to choose what you're willing to forfeit and you get to choose what you don't want to forfeit you know really in many ways you have more control at menopause than you ever had before you can control your hormones. You, you can make choices that you never could before. You know, there are women who learn from me that, you know, that one glass of red wine that prevents, helps prevent a heart attack is not good for your bones because it kind of increases your risk for osteoporosis a little bit, and it increases your risk for breast cancer a whole lot. That same one glass of red wine a day does different things for your risks for different diseases. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've had women in my seminars who go, but I'm not willing to give my red wine, and I go, good for you. You don't have to. You can, you, can make that, you can make that modification somewhere else. You can choose something else to make that work for you. And that's what the whole education is about, and I see it as a great big smorgasbord of all these options, and you get to pick and choose what works for you. That's the beauty of it. I just give facts. I, you know, I want people to know the truth so they can make decisions that really will work for them as opposed to have mis- having misinformation and fear. And we live in a world of sound bites and people have fear and fear is the strongest emotion on the planet. You scare someone and they will, they will be paralyzed. It sure is. And I, and I try to erase it. I want to give people peace of mind. I want you to have information. I want you to be confident in being able to make choices that you know are based on fact. And then you can still do anything you want to do, but you'll know what you're doing. That's the key. Yeah. You know, I don't have a product to sell people. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, you know, angle. I just teach you everything, diet, lifestyle, the whole bit, everything. <laughs> well, I talked about that in my intro, and that's why I love your channel. Like, I've looked at everyone's channel. I've looked at every <laughs> doctor who has a blog or oh. you know, every medical, you know, I Google stuff. That's what I do. Yep. I do research. And I got to say, you were like the impartial person that gave me all yeah. the information and you yeah. weren't trying to sell me anything and you weren't trying to steer me in one direction or the no. other. No. But I just was amazed at how much I did not know about exactly. everything. I start at the beginning and I just assume you know nothing. I am not going to say a word without t- defining it for you. I'm going to make sure you know everything. I'm going to make it fun. And to entertain you and make it fun, it's going to take longer to cover the material. But guess what? That works for a whole lot of people. And if you want a faster route, that's where you read the book. That's where you, you know, watch the, the webinars or that's where you watch the, the seminar on DVD. There are many ways to get it faster if that's what you want. Exactly. So or it's a consultation one-on-one and, you know, that is the quickest route. <laughs> Dr. Taylor offered me a consultation a while ago. And so I had one of her one-on-one consultations yes. and you sent me my, my giant document with all my info. <laughs> I know it's what like 48 pages right here. <laughs> Every time a woman gets that, they just go, Oh my God. And they, but they use it forever. They just love it. I'm not kidding you. I refer to this all the time because it's such an ongoing journey of like tweaking what's happening or a question will come up that I won't have the answer to. I go right to this or a friend will ask me like, what are you yeah. doing about this? And I'll be like, Oh my gosh, well, let me, let me yeah. send you a page. And what's good about it is it's all the, it's all the, information, the facts, but I weave into it all your particulars because as you know with a consultation, I send you an email that says, send me anything you want. Send me all your questions, your concerns, your fears, your labs, anything you want to cover. You can write volumes about yourself and women do. They send me reams of material, but I go through every little thing and everything that you touch on in your writing or in what you send me, I put it in there in context so that you see where you fall with all the facts. And that's what's magical about the document. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I I wrote a book. (laughs) I wrote a book. I included screenshots from my, you know, health portal and uh, sent it over to you. (laughs) But everything that you sent back was really 
tailored to me. And Everything has its benefits and its risks. That is life. And so you have to say, what are your benefits from estrogen? What are your risks? And the whole key is tailoring it all to you. That's what I do with consultations. It's like, let's take all these facts and let's tailor them to you. And let's decide what your best benefits and risks are. That's the key. Because it's not the same for any two women. I just want to make sure you're looking at the big picture of how much each thing can accomplish and how much it cannot accomplish. And as long as you're happy with it, I'm going to help you do it. That's how it works. That's how, that's how my business works. I'm, I'm there to help you do it your way. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's so great. And it's so much, you know, it's so refreshing because it's not really what you get from yeah. a lot of people that are out there. They're, they are trying to sell you something or they want you to do it one way. I don't push anything. I, you know, I, I say to women, I go, I don't care how you manage your menopause. I just want you to be happy with what you do now and later, and I want you to be sure of what you're doing. I don't want you to look back 20 years from now and say, why didn't anyone tell me? That is what I am trying to erase. <laughs> that feeling of, I didn't know. Right. And I feel like that's me 100%. I didn't know. And now that I know what I didn't know, I'm amazed at all the information that there exactly. is. That that you really need to know to make these important decisions because it is going to affect your health for the next 30 years. And I want women to be able to make an informed decision. Yeah. And, you know, that's where all these questions come in. So, Well, you know, um, women have never had an education on menopause. There's, it's never been out there. I've decided to use my YouTube channel like a, like a, like a classroom. <laughs> it's, it, it's a classroom and I call it menopause university. And it's like, I just teach you everything you need to know because I think you deserve to know it. it. It's really that simple for me. I'm like going, I just think women have a right to know all this. Yeah, yeah I agree 100%. That's why we're trying to get this information out there, that there's more that you need to know to make a decision. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, get yourself educated. And if it takes watching, you know, 156 <laughs> videos, then start today. I <laughs> know, watch them in order. Watch them in order. Okay. You know, she wants you to watch them in order. I have to confess. I skip around a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm like interested in progesterone this week. So I'm like watching all the progesterone ones. And then I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know anything. I have to go back to the beginning. So then I watch it. <laughs> yes. I'm all the map, but even so, it's just, you know, and I'm reading your book, which I have right back here. I'm reading your book and I listen to a few other podcasts and you have a podcast as well. So yeah. there's just lots of different ways to get the information. And I think it's important for women to, get that information we're all walking around in the dark we're all yeah. walking around with these fear no. ideas that don't let us expand our knowledge of what there yeah. really is out there for us that can actually help us yeah. and so that's why i'm so so happy that we're able to do this today oh angie i thank you so much because you know i I love helping women and I want to reach as many as I can and I wish every woman got this education in her 20s or 30s and was prepared and knew exactly what was going on when it happens and didn't have this waste of time and misery and if you know breaking down of relationships and everything that goes with not knowing what's going on. I wish that all women would get this education and I just I just love any opportunity to give it to them. And so I thank you so much for making this possible and exposing your audience to this because I hope that it helps some of them. <laughs> I think it will. I know a lot of my viewers already watch your videos. They all <laughs> love you. Some of them have had consultations. They have your yeah. book. They are singing your praises. When I mentioned <laughs> that I was doing this, they were like, yes, <laughs> you're having her on. So thank you so much for your time today. Oh, I'll you. really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angie. Take care and enjoy it, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.